Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Oh my goodness, I am addicted to this game. <laughs> oh, this pack is so fun. So we are in a pretty decent spot here. Last episode, we automated fully pulsating polymer clay. We also got the blast furnace up and running for things like aluminium and energetic alloy, which we'll need today. And we got a couple of MV machines. So our goal for the start of this episode is to be able to unlock the next tier of circuit. Currently, we are crafting and using these primitive circuits, the tier one and two. But ideally, we want to be able to get to the second tier ones. One of the things we're going to need to get there is an assembling machine. There is no circuit assembler in this pack, only the assembling machine. This just costs some tier two circuits and some LV components. I don't think we've made robot arms yet, so we're going to need two of these things. This should be a quest. And we can make our assembling machine. Okay, so the assembling machine we'll be using to put together the circuits, but of course we need some new components for these things as well. Checking out the recipe for the second tier one, the circuit we want to go for. We are going to need some capacitors, which is just some tin alloy, some rubber sheets and some silver. We can manage this, no problem. And we also need a new tier circuit board, the phenolic substrate, which is the upgrade from the coated circuit board. And this takes phenol in a chemical reactor. So how do we get phenol? Well, as the quest recommends, I think the best way and maybe only way at this stage is to use the pyrolyze oven. This is another Greg Tech multi-block, which can, is capable of producing quite a lot of things, actually. The only thing is, this takes a lot of iron, and this isn't something that we have a lot of. We have a couple of stacks in this chest. Definitely not enough for us, though. Pyrolyze acquired. And we're quite a bit richer on ingots as well. Uh, no doubt the, I'll have to go mining once again before the end of this episode. But let's see if we can build out this thing. And I believe in CE we also get the preview. Yes, we do. Nice. This thing is a bit special since it's 4x3 and not 3x3 like the blast furnace. We will absolutely need a fluid input and output hatch for this, which we'll put on the back. And I think, actually, yeah, maybe let's put the input and output bus on the back as well. These can go on any of the casings, i.e. not the coil blocks. We need the energy input hatch. I think this recipe we can run it in LV, and the rest just has to be casings. And we have a valid pyrolyzed oven. Awesome. So to start making our phenol, we need coal, and it has to be Minecraft coal. It can't be charcoal for this. And we're also going to need steam. This is one of the rare cases in this pack where you do actually need steam. And we're going to be going with the fluid heater for this. I did make some extra pumps somewhere. There's our one fluid heater. This will just place straight on the input hatch. Although, you know what? This is kind of backwards. I don't like going right to left. Yeah, let's switch it around. We'll go left to right. <laughs> the proper way. Yeah, so that means fluid heater here. And we'll need an end of war to supply some water. Yeah, two of our primitive processors. We can shapeless craft into integrated circuits. Fluid heater is on configuration one. This just lets the machine know which recipe you want to run. Oh, it looks like we're not getting enough power here either. I knew this would come up soon enough. I just didn't think it would be this soon. We'll need a second circuit for the pyrolyzed oven, also on configuration one. Does this go in the controller? No, I think it goes in the input bus, right? And then we just have to give this thing coal. Probably not all of our coal though. Let's maybe just start with four stacks as we still do need some coal for other things. Is this running? It is running, awesome. Oh yeah, we're, we're really, really struggling for energy here. I think we're gonna have to shut off the blast furnace for now. Yeah, between crafting this thing, I have been working on a little side project to be able to fix our energy, which I think we can get to today as well. But yeah, looks like our oven has finished at least one cycle here. We are getting phenol and we're also getting coal coke out of this. I don't know if this has any use for us at this stage. I guess we can centrifuge for carbon. We're really just interested in this phenol though, so let's get a tank for that. A steel drum should be just fine for now. And we'll use a drawer for the coke. Alright, so we got phenol building up for this phenolic circuit board. Another thing that we need for the capacitors actually is a cluster mill. And the reason for that is we need tin alloy foil, which in this pack can only be made in the cluster mill. Alright, so let's start putting all this together, shall we? Well, wow, that is a lot of clay dust. <laughs> I did make up some tin alloy ingots. Oh wait, does it have to be made from plates? I think it might be. Yeah, it's compressed into plates, then cluster mill into foil, that's what it is. So since we're going to be putting together some circuits, I would like to go quite big with this. Maybe we'll aim for two stacks. It's really, really a good idea to start batch crafting at this stage, since I don't think we'll get access to the third and final tier ones until after some 
some chemistry and things. Alright, so you might be able to tell by the time that's passed. That timer is kind of stressing me out, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I have been doing a bunch more mining, crafting, gathering and machine processing. And I was just going to cut straight to when we had the circuits, but I think it's important to go through this, honestly. So there's some processing steps that I've changed up to make more efficient at this stage. First of all, we have a new compressor, a second LV compressor, and this is compressing wood pulp. We are then using the wood pulp along with rubber and glue to give us coated circuit boards. This gives us an eight at a time rather than three at a time out of the crafting table. So it's only a small optimization, but I think one that's well worth it. This also costs glue, which we're getting from centrifuge and rubber. So when we centrifuge rubber, we also get raw rubber pulp, and this we're using in the chemical reactor along with sulfur, and we can get the chemical fluid rubber. Although I think we're actually out of sulfur by now. We may have just a tiny bit left. In fact, let's buy some more. Yeah, we'll go for like a stack and a half. I think we're, I know we're gonna need it in fact today later on. And some of these furnaces have also been upgraded to diamond. Look at this, look at the smelt time on that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, generally if we're waiting on something, we just upgrade or we make more. So all this fluid rubber, we can actually use in the assembling machine to coat wire. We can use this with circuit 24. And I've also been putting it through the fluid solidifier for rubber sheets. We need the rubber sheets as part of the capacitor, I believe it is. We are also now up to 40 buckets of phenol, which we're actually just going to use right now. So phenol plus the coated circuit boards and the chemical reactor. Oh, this is going to go a very long way. This only costs, I think, 100 per board. So 47 buckets is going to go a very long way in these substrates. And we got our wires all finishing up. Okay, I think we're ready. I think we're ready for this. First up, the capacitor. So we got four stacks of tin alloy foil, two stacks of fine silver wire, and two stacks of rubber gives us four stacks of capacitors and the quest. The circuit recipe also calls for a fluid, either tin or soldering alloy. But since the resources are so plentiful, we are just going to use tin. We're not going to combine this with antimony, even though it is technically a slightly more efficient. Sometimes you have to be inefficient to be efficient. <laughs> so this will put through the fluid extractor. We'll do two stacks of tin, I think. Actually, you know what? Let's do four stacks. We'll need a few more stacks of resistors, which at this point we can actually make in the assembling machine 12 at a time, just with some copper wire and coal dust. Honestly, that, that might be too much. That may, be <laughs> that may be a few too many resistors. Maybe we'll just do half of this. I've also been working on batching up some more motors for LV. I think we got enough for a full stack of LV electric motors. Man, that is satisfying. <laughs> All right, here we are, enough for two stacks of the second tier one circuits. It's pretty quick by the looks of it as well, so I don't think we'll be waiting that long even. Oh, what do we do with all these circuits now? <laughs> as we saw earlier, power is definitely an issue for us. And in fact, I've also unplugged DML. We are definitely gonna have to look into some upgraded power generation. And that is gonna come in the, f I'm trying to find the quest here. That is gonna come in the form of the numismatic dynamos. So I did anticipate this actually before I started this episode. And this is the little side project I was working on, actually. Once again, though, we do need iron, although I did want to show this off. Like, look how efficient this is. So we managed to get smashing on this that mining hammer. I used some of the experience from DML, actually. Normally, when you smelt limonite, it gives you nuggets, which is no good. But the auto smashing actually gives you iron, and this is a very dense iron vein here. But most of it is already gone. To make our numismatic dynamos, we need some diamond furnaces, some more excitation coils, and a redstone transmission coil. All things I have pre-crafted before the episode, actually. The only thing we're missing for this is some Vibrant Alloy. Vibrant Alloy is a blast furnace recipe with Ender Pearls and Energetic Alloy. As we saw last episode, the Energetic Alloy also takes Glowstone, which I found in the Lost Cities in those underground tunnels with the rails. I was actually able to pick up quite a bit there, so we have some smell in here. I think it's actually prioritising the aluminium. I may take this out for now. And then as for the pearls for the Vibrant Alloy, I actually switched off our DML system, so we're no longer producing polymer clay. So we've built up, what is this, 37 ender pearls? Well, that actually, <laughs> that's perfect right there. <laughs> Let's get all of this through the blast furnace, although we do want to keep some energetic alloy. And the reason for that is we need Vibrant Bimetal Gears, which is smelted from the Energized Bimetal Gear, which is smelted from the Infinity Bimetal Gear, which means we need Grains of Infinity. So before the episode, I did set up Grains of Infinity here. In fact, you may have noticed the ender chest back at our base, but this is just a source of blazing pyrothium, some nether rack around the outsides to set the bedrock on fire, and there's a chance when the fire extinguishes itself we get grains of infinity, which is collected by the vacuum chest in the middle and sent to the ender chest above it. That is chunk loaded, so it's just going to be a fully passive process for us, and all the grains end up in this ender chest here. The alloy smelters are full, no surprise there. <laughs> 
yeah, generally you want to keep your machines running 100% of the time. That's that's generally a good thing. We're batching up some more steel, some more red alloy, some more conductive iron here. We got some more copper wire going. You can never have too many copper wire. Look at that. <laughs> For these to function the way we want, we also need these calibrations. We'll need, I think the number is 10 fuel catalyzers. There's nine right there, and I think we have some spare as well. Yeah, we have two here spare. We'll need at least two hardened upgrade kits and two of the reinforced. Let's see, can we make the neck? Can we make sig? No, we can't make signalum yet, can we? The last few vibrant alloy have came through the blast furnace, and we can make two numismatic dynamos. So once we upgrade these guys, we got some augmentation slots. First one is going to get this calibration, and the next uh, just fuel catalyzers. And the calibration allows us to burn. Emeralds, I think we can do emeralds or diamonds, but we're going to be doing diamonds. And as you can see, we're producing 6,250 RF per tick. And the best part about this is I don't think they actually waste fuel either. If their internal buffer fills up, then they just stop. Although because we're now producing 6,000 odd RF per tick, we definitely have to upgrade these conduits. Even these steam dynamos is overproducing for the amount that this conduit can handle. There's quite a few energy conduit tiers. The one we have right now is conductive iron. Although now that we have our assembling machine, we can actually make these a little bit cheaper. Wait, is it cheaper? It's 1 to 3 in the crafting table and... Oh yeah, I guess it is 1 to 4 in the assembling machine, so we definitely want to use this recipe. So the next tier after conductive is going to be energetic alloy. And we should have some conduit binder. I did batchcraft quite a bit of this, although I think we may need to make more. Luckily though, we can actually steal from this system over here. So we need gravel, we need sand, and we need clay for conduit binder. All things we have here when we're creating polymer clay. I hope you can see why I actually rushed this system now, because we get the ender pearls so that we can upgrade the conduits, and that does take a little while to build up. Plus, we can make our conduit binder very, very easily without having to go and farm the rivers. And I think we may make quite a bit more conductive iron, even though it does multiply in the recipe. We might as well go for as big a batch as we can at the moment. Although, yeah, I think we're still just going to be waiting on this blast furnace for the vibrant alloy. But we are not going to be stopping at energetic alloy. This outputs 2048 RF a tick, which is actually still not enough for our numies. The vibrant alloy is 8000 RF a tick, which we could settle for, but I think we're actually going to go a tier higher. And we're going to make N steel as well. This machine right here confirms my suspicions that I had after rewatching last episode. This thing is not just an alloy smelter, this is an advanced alloy smelter. I think our third MV machine. And as you may notice, it is powered by an LV line. This is the power of Nomi Factory. <laughs> and the CEF spam. So you can, in fact, power L MV machines off an LV line. In fact, I think you can even go as far as, basically as far as you want, as long as you provide enough amps. So the reason we need the advanced alloy smelter is to get end steel. I didn't realize this was an MV recipe. We got the end stone from crafting DML materials and we pulverize that, melt it with dark steel and we get end steel. So now we can upgrade the conduits again. I've already upgraded these to vibrant, but that's just because we needed some power over there. I'm hoping there's still enough charge in the CEF to allow us to actually craft these conduits. And you may have also noticed we now have the next tier of circuit as well. So if we look at progression here, I thought since we're going to be making more MV machines, we needed more tier 2s. And there's not much point to use the primitive circuits now, so we have the second tier 2s. The recipe, honestly, at this point is fairly easy. It does take three tier 1s though, which is... Wait a second. 30... Wait, I didn't mean to make 35. <laughs> well, we have them now. We have them now. Yeah, let's upgrade the conduits to end steel, and I think this actually is a very fav favorable ratio for us. It's only one vibrant for four end steel conduits. And going all the way up like this at this stage means that we don't have to upgrade these conduits for a very long while. I think these will carry us all the way to EV or possibly even IV. Although we have already run through all the diamonds that we had. So I crafted up our first shulker model to try to get this thing leveled. And we just got this plugged into our steam dynamos and we're powering it off that. But once we have all this fully automated, we can actually put the shulkers through loot fabricators, which will give us six diamonds, and then those we can feed into the numismatic dynamos and we'll have basically self-contained power. To get all of that set up though, we're going to need a bit more infrastructure, and I think before fully fleshing out DML, we're going to invest in AE2. 
Now that we have this extra loot fab though, I think we'll move this along with the simulation chamber over here. And that way we can actually have it self-feed already, even if we have to manually input the polymer clay for the, for the time being. And if I remember correctly, these machines are sided, so we have to have input in the top, and output we have to have out of the bottom. We'll have some drawers for storage for the pristines and the polymer clay inserts. And I think we'll also have to invest in our first drawer controller. Could be a quest. Uh-huh. That can just sit in the middle here, I guess. And we'll have... Yeah, in fact, we'll have to have three drawers here. The first one will lock for polymer clay. And then from the drawer controller, we'll extract on brown. And insert polymer clay in the simulation chamber. Very good. This starts the simulations. So this will output the terrestrial matter and the pristines. Those will get their own drawer, and that will be extract on blue on the bottom. And we can insert this into the bottom side of the drawer controller. You guys may have noticed if, I, if you've watched a long time, but I, I generally try to keep a, a rule of thumb when working with item and fluid conduits. Of course, do whatever works for you, but at least for me, I always have outputs on blue. Anything that we want to take out of the system and store, if it's going to like an ME interface or whatever, it always ends up on blue channel. Brown is for inputs, so if we're, for example, taking something from an interface, to a machine that is always on brown same for fluids and then purple i use for like catalyst type items is normally the way I, I like to go about things but yeah from here we just have to insert the shulker matter into this loot fabricator and in fact we'll need a filter for this and even things like filters will start batch crafting at this point 15 should last us uh, for probably an episode <laughs> all right so pristines in the loot fab and polymer clay in the simulation chamber and this gives us our diamonds in fact we'll need a fourth drawer won't we for diamonds which we can then extract from the drawer controller and round robin these between the two numismatic dynamos. Awesome, and now we have free power. <laughs> so in theory, this should keep the polymer clay system now running since we can provide power to these simulation chambers. And we can turn all of this system now back on that now that we have power. I think all of these were disabled. Nice, working machines, that's what we like to see. <laughs> So, you know what? Speaking of AE, I think it's time. I think it's time we break into Applied Energistics. I honestly can't remember exactly what we're going to require for this. So, let's just follow the quest book and we'll see where this leads us. First of all, we need a charger. And we've already run into our first problem here. It wants us to make charge Certus Quartz. Only, we don't have any charge Certus Quartz. I'm definitely glad we marked this vein on the map. I think we might as well just mine it all. It'll save us coming back. Actually, what do we get out of auto smell here? Oh, we get the crystals. That's amazing. Oh, that's so nice. That saves us so much time. <laughs> So we're back here in the overworld having absolutely no luck finding these meteors for applied energistics. Oh look, floating sapling. Yeah, I realised one of the things we're going to need is the inscriber presses. And the one and only meteor I think we have in, in range is this one, and that does not have any presses in it. You know, maybe we should invest in the compass actually. Only problem with this is we need void crystals to craft these things. I know that you can find these in the Lost Cities, but that means we're looking for two items rather than just one. So let's invest in this Atomic Reconstructor to turn coal into void. Oh, this is going to take two MV emitters though. We need to send some Eyes of Ender through the Autoclave. And in fact, most of the Ceres Quartz I gathered is went through this thing. This is how we charge this. Very, very easy in this pack, just with some water. Hmm, am I missing something or how do we get black quartz for this casing? Apparently it spawns in the quartz vein, but I don't think we have any. There's certainly none in our chests here. And there's no Nomi coin recipe for it either. I guess there's this autoclave recipe from crushed black quartz. Oh, and we get this from electrolyzing quartzite. That we have plenty of. This, however, is an MV recipe, which means we need an MV electrolyzer for this. That gets us our quartz, aluminium casing, two MV emitters, our atomic reconstructor. It's probably a quest somewhere, but we're we're missing we're missing quests all over the place now. <laughs> but I think now we can craft the compass. And the compass points south, it looks like. Oh, here we are. This took some digging to find, actually. Chest number one has... Wow. No way. <laughs> we got them all. Wait, is this them all? Oh, that's right. We're still missing silicon. Meteor number two. I'll take that. I know these are craftable, by the way, but we need the MV laser engraver for this. 
Although, who knows, maybe we actually need that to start Applied Energistics. I can't remember. Yeah, so to give us a little bit of a head start next episode, I've set up our charger here with automatic input and output. And this way we can batchcraft lots and lots of Ceres to charge it up. And then this we can use for Flux, Crystals, and also for some storage components and things. Another thing to give us a head start for next time is the inclusion of these other five simulation chambers. No, this is six. <laughs> six simulation chambers. And this we're using for Zombie, Skeleton, Spider, Witch, Creeper, and Guardian. And we also have our Blaze Data model here. This is just to get some of these things leveled. All of the loot ends up in the storage crate, and then we can take the pristines here, and we can just manually loot fabricate it for things like iron. Although actually, with the iron, I remember there was a special case here where you can use the rotten flesh. Is that still the case here? Yeah, this recipe here, look at this. We can use one rotten flesh for eight iron ingots. And if we use the pristines, it only gives us 12 this way. Whereas we can get 64 rotten flesh. Plus we're getting overworlding matter from most of these other simulation chambers anyway. So at least for the zombie ones, we're going to switch to flesh. And that is an extremely efficient way of making iron. Look at that. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> In fact, I think most of this will make into raw iron since we're kind of low on that stuff. In between waiting on some of the materials for those simulation chambers though, I have started batch crafting our next next batch of circuits. I realised that we were kind of going too small with the batches. GTNH has, has got me playing a little bit conservative. Oh yeah, I did switch the solder and alloy here as well. But yeah, we should be going for like 6, 7, 8, 10 stacks of things at a time. Been making up some components for the MV. And yeah, I added a second LV wire mill. I found that we were waiting on copper wire. Even with all that we crafted earlier, we need more copper wire. And also since we set all of this up now, we are net positive on diamonds. So we are now overproducing diamonds and we're going to slowly start to buffer this in the in the drawer. Our Enderman model here is already at superior, which increases the pristine chance to 20%, which means we produce polymer clay much faster. And we got an ender chest here just for the very short distance over to there which inputs polymer clay into this system and then any excess actually i'm just taking here and moving over manually and that will feed these simulation chambers but we do want to prioritize the power since without power none of these machines run all right well i'm going to continue to batch craft here well already another two and a half stacks of circuits that's awesome i need to stop though i'm getting <laughs> a little bit carried away with myself here i think next episode we're definitely going to get into some applied energistics and also craft some more of the MV machines. Oh look, there's the Atomic Reconstructor quest there. Oh, and the Meteor Compass quest. <laughs> I guess we have all these done already. Anyways guys, thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.